Hi, my name is Karen Peterson. This is part two of a demonstration on oxalic dribble treatment for Varroa mites. Part one is already on YouTube with Regina BTV. Part one looked at, is this the right treatment for you? And what do you need to do to get ready? In part two, I'm going to show you how to mix it and how to apply it to your hives. The first thing that you need to do is put on your safety gear. Oxalic acid is quite dangerous to humans in the powder form, and so you need a respirator. Make sure the respirator fits tightly to your face. Therefore, make sure that it is under the eye protection and against your skin. You neither want to risk breathing in oxalic acid nor getting it into your eyes. If the respirator is properly fitted, you should be able to cover the discharge vent and breathe out, making the mask balloon on your face. Obviously, you should be wearing long sleeves and pants, and the last thing to put on is your chemical-resistant gloves. I boil the distilled water that I use to make the oxalic sugar solution. It's easier to dissolve both the oxalic acid crystals and the sugar into hot water. I've already put about a third of the water needed into my mixing pail. I weigh and dissolve the oxalic crystals into the hot water first. That way I know that all of the oxalic has been dissolved. I get my oxalic crystals from Bee Maid because then I know that they can be used on bees. This was filmed on October the 25th, 2018. Mid to late October is usually about the time that we treat our hives with oxalic dribble. I know that there is no brood left in the hives now, and therefore there are no varroa mites hiding in the brood. Oxalic acid treatments don't work on varroa mites hiding in the brood. I'm making enough solution to treat all of my hives. While you don't want the solution sitting around for long, and I keep it cool once I have made it, I will be able to treat all of my hives in less than two days. It takes about 30 seconds to treat a hive, which is quicker than measuring out the oxalic. As you can see, the gloves are important, as I spilt some of the crystals onto my hands as I dumped it out. I also make sure to close the container of oxalic as soon as I'm finished with it so that there's no possibility of it getting spilt or hurting someone else. Make sure that the oxalic crystals are completely dissolved in the hot water before moving on. Some of the lumps take a bit more attention. I usually measure out all of the sugar that I need before putting on the safety gear. I don't like wearing the safety gear and I want to make sure that I don't contaminate my sugar with oxalic acid from the gloves. So I've already weighed out most of the sugar and put it into another pail. I just left the last kilogram of sugar that I need for the recipe to film it. I follow the recipe exactly. I weigh both the oxalic and the sugar and carefully measure the water as well. While I'm waiting for the kettle to boil again, I dump in all of the sugar. Obviously, it won't all mix in, but you can start mixing it. Usually, the solution goes cloudy, and then once I finally have all of the water in, it will become clear again. Add all the water and make sure that all of the sugar is dissolved. Once it is totally clear, it is ready to treat hives. We're now ready to go out to a bee yard and show you how to apply oxalic dribble treatment to the hives. My original pail is quite heavy, and so instead I carry a 4 liter ice cream pail with me. I pour enough into the ice cream pail to treat a yard, leaving the bigger pail in the truck. I always make sure the big pail of oxalic acid solution is closed so that it can't be spilt or contaminated. As I said in part 1, I always buy a new veterinary syringe every year when I apply oxalic dribble. I'm not sure why, but a new syringe allows you to smoothly apply the solution, whereas an old syringe is sticky and jerky. It's not worth the hassle. Following the recommended dose is just as important as following the recipe. 
Every hive should get 50 milliliters or 50 cc's. It's the same volume. It doesn't matter if it's a single brood chamber hive or a double brood chamber hive. We're treating singles, but don't double the dose for a double brood chamber hive. When applying it to the hives, you want to smoothly administer the dose evenly over all of the bees. Figure out where the bees are and start squeezing it out between the combs on top of the bees. Your goal is to have the syrup solution hit and coat the bees. You do not want to puddle it on top of the frames where they might eat it rather than coating themselves with it. We are doing this when the daytime high will be about 8 degrees Celsius, but we regularly do it when it's cooler. You can see that they are clustered quite tight together this morning. That way I know that all of the bees are getting treated because they aren't out flying. Also, it's actually easier to apply when they are clustered tighter because trying to get 50 milliliters to spread over the whole hive when they're, when they're further spread out can be challenging. I don't treat doubles, but it's my understanding that if you want to use this method to treat doubles, you should be cracking the two supers apart and also spreading some of the solution onto the bees in the bottom brood box to make the treatment effective. I imagine that makes it even harder to spread the dose out over the whole hive evenly. If you treat enough hives during cool weather, you will eventually open a hive that looks like it has no bees, and yet it doesn't look like it's been robbed. It's my experience that those hives are just clustered low in the box. Sometimes the melted frost on the lid can help me figure out where the cluster is, and sometimes I just guess. If you start dribbling the solution down between the combs, you will find them. You'll start to hear them humming as it hits them, or you'll also hear the solution hit the bottom board. Hives like this are normal and shouldn't slow you down. I usually have someone working with me. Today I actually have two people working with me. The first person mans the smoker and opens the hives. It's difficult to open hives with gloves on, so that person is opening and closing lids. The second person is screwing the winter covers down. We're breaking the propolis seal to open and treat the hives. I maintain that treating the mites is more important than retaining the propolis seal, especially when we can duplicate the seal. We screw down the lids to mimic the seal. Therefore, the cover can't shift in the pack over winter, and we won't have any more ventilation than we plan to give them. You probably notice that I'm not wearing a respirator this time. The oxalic is no longer in powder form, and so it's not risky to breathe in. Therefore, none of my crew is wearing respirators, but I am still wearing the gloves and the eye protection. This year, we're treating all of our hives in two days, and then we will be wrapping the hives in the next week. It's not uncommon for us to add treating to our wrapping routine. That means that sometimes we treat a yard and then wrap it before moving on to the next yard. It just depends on which method is more efficient that year for getting the job done. I know that some of you are questioning or even judging us for not having our hives wrapped near the end of October. It's true that we certainly wouldn't harm the bees by having them wrapped earlier. However, we're not harming the bees by leaving them exposed to temperatures that aren't significantly different than indoor wintering temperatures. There is no brood in the hives now, and so they aren't trying to keep the hive that warm. I would say that taking your wrap off too early in the spring, when there is brood, does much more harm than not putting it on as early. The advantage of wrapping at cooler temperatures is that the bees aren't flying as much and don't get as confused when the wraps go on. The disadvantage is that sometimes we misjudge the forecast and end up wrapping after snow. Perhaps some of you are also thinking that dribbling oxalic solution on them when it's cold would chill the bees and harm them. 
I would argue that 50 milliliters is not that much. It's just oh, a little more than three tablespoons, and it's being spread out on a lot of bees. Hives going into the winter should have enough bees to fill their space and keep themselves warm. If 50 milliliters is going to chill the hive, you have a bigger problem than the oxalic treatment. This is the last thing that I'm going to say. I hate it when people, whether that's researchers or other beekeepers, talk about doing something, but they don't describe what else they are doing in conjunction. Often beekeeping is a system. There's many different systems, but done together the particular system works. You have to look at the whole system to figure out what you can pick and choose, and sometimes it isn't possible to pick and choose from different systems without creating problems. So this is our system. In northwest Saskatchewan, we are treating singles that will be overwintered outdoors on screen bottom boards that have been closed off with a coroplast cover. The hives will be wrapped with inland plastic wraps into quad packs. The yards are well sheltered and in almost full sun. The stock has been overwintered in Saskatchewan for over 20 years. It is not a warm weather stock that we've brought in. The hives will be totally covered in snow as soon as there is enough. This might be as early as November or as late as February. And finally, we are controlling skunks, raccoons, rats, and mice during the fall and on through the winter to ensure that the hives are strong throughout the winter. You now have a basis to help you decide whether this particular treatment will work in your system. I hope that this video has helped you, has shown you how to mix oxalic acid and how to apply it to your hives.